Hi, assalamu alaikum. I am Dr. Aisha Bashiruddin, an educationist, researcher, and writer. Welcome to the 16th presentation video based on my research on Muslim women identity in America. In the last two presentation videos, I presented the analysis of theme three with particular focus on two generations of women, that is baby boomers and generation X. In this presentation video, I will continue to present analysis of theme three with the spotlight on generation Y, that is women between the ages of 24 and 39. So stay with me. Please share, subscribe, and like my channel. The third theme that emerged from the analysis of the data is about facing challenges in forming a Muslim identity in America. Muslim women of Generation Y reported many challenges they faced in their day-to-day -day living. They talked about various challenges and the ways they have responded to the challenges. One of the challenges that they talk about is discrimination and hate. For example, Farida from Pakistan narrated that once she went to a counselor for some education related matter in her university with her father. When they went to his office, he stood up and shook his father's hand and then extended his hand towards her. She apologized and said that she does not shake hands with men. He looked confused. He asked if I was sure to be in the business industry. Her father supported her and explained it to the counselor and took a stand for her. He told him that no one should be discriminated if they prefer not to shake hands with men. Zaitun from Pakistan experienced a lot of discrimination and hate. She said, and I quote, many people around me do not understand why I do not go out to mix gender parties or go clubbing or go dating, unquote. Many people have told her that if she is a Muslim, she is a terrorist or an extremist. At her work, she had young boys who were hardcore rednecks, while she, as a Muslim, was their manager and head of the department. She said that they had problem reporting to her because she was a Muslim woman. She said, and I quote, I really had to address that with compassion and patience and kindness, empathy and perseverance. I had to handle this tough situation without getting into political argument about what is wrong and what is right." Unquote. She had to talk at a level of human beings who have to work together, leaving behind all prejudices. There are some women who experienced incidents which they feel reflect that most of the people in America were ignorant and prejudiced. For example, Sadia narrates one of the many incidents that she encountered. She said that the American people are ignorant and prejudiced. They do not want to know about other people around them. She had an incident where she was in a mall and sitting in the food court when a child on the table next to her was talking to his father and asking him why does she wear this covering, that is the jilbab, hijab, and niqab? And the father with contempt said that this is her Halloween costume. She just ignored what he said because she did not want to create a scene. After 9-11, the women observed that there have been many changes and challenges. For example, Aiza from Uganda narrated that her best friends told her off in college. 
she said, and I quote, they told me that they cannot hang out with her. Their parents told them to be very careful because they do not trust me anymore, unquote. Some of her friends did not respond to her phone because they were avoiding her. One of them told her that it is too dangerous to be friends with her after what happened. She then just started ignoring them, but this caused a lot of undue stress to her. Another example was given by Riyad from Jordan about the concept of Islam that the Americans had regarding the Muslims and the religion. She said that one day she was coming back from her work when a group of young boys yelled at her and told her to go back where she came from. She thought about the comment. She said to them, and I quote, where should I go? I was born and raised here. My family has been here for centuries. This is my home, unquote. She said that they were awestruck and did not know what to say. However, she thought it was best to ignore them and move forward. Mahreen from Egypt also discussed the challenging incident that she had when she went to pick her son up from high school. She saw that some boys were around him and saying something. She parked her car and came to the scene. She heard them say that he needs to go away to his own country. He replied that he was born here and this is his country also. She asked her son to ignore them because they have a misconception that all Muslims are recent immigrants. Most of the women talked about the way media depicted them as Muslim women and how that influenced the thinking of the masses. Maab from Cuba raised a question of why people cannot see empowered Muslim women who are following the path delegated by Allah. They see them as oppressed because this is how they are represented in the media and elsewhere. Similarly, Farida from Pakistan said, and I quote, my colleagues in the school always asked me if I was oppressed and I wear hijab because my husband wants me to wear it, unquote. The only way to educate them according to her, was to talk about the belief and practice of Islam and how hijab is part of a larger picture. The truth is also that many Muslim women live powerful lives sourced from the freedom granted to them by Allah. But unfortunately, Islam is painted with a broad brush of rigidity. Abba from Cuba said, that if we wear hijab, we are identified and discriminated against, and if we don't, then we have no problems. And she said that she wears a hijab because she follows familial and community practices. Zaitun from Pakistan stated, and I quote, to keep a Muslim and American identity is very complex and requires one to be a very strong person. I don't want to be distinguished or singled out in public, so I wear modest clothes but no hijab." Unquote. Sadia from Ghana said that sometimes if you have friends with whom you have mutual respect, then it is easier to explain to them what it means to be a Muslim woman, but otherwise it is very challenging. Many of them said that they have the right to be treated equally and the right not to be discriminated against or harassed because of their religion, their gender, or perceptions about their nationality or ethnicity. Dolat from Jordan said that she is a Muslim and she wears a hijab. She feels that as Muslim women, like other people in America, 
she has the right to practice her religion. She said, and I quote, Whenever I went for a job of a receptionist, I was asked a question about taking off my hijab. I was denied jobs for wearing a hijab. Unquote. She felt discriminated against because of wearing a hijab. Sadia from Ghana said, and I quote, we went to see an apartment for rent. The landlord looked at us with hatred and did not allow us to enter the apartment to check it because I was wearing a hijab. Then my husband would go alone to look for an apartment, unquote. Almina von Ghana said that media sources are instrumental in providing misleading information which lead to discrimination against Muslims in general and Muslim women in particular. Ma Mahreen from Egypt narrated how she was discriminated at her job because the manager followed the media, which propagated the negative image of Muslim women. She said, and I quote, they only see us as stereotypes and hence discriminate against us. For example, my manager negotiated salary with me because he was giving me a favor by giving me a job and my salary was much lower than others working with me." Unquote. Many of them said that they are being visible as Muslims by wearing a hijab, which invariably led to discrimination and verbal abuse. Farida from Pakistan said that she feels anxious when she steps out of the house. Many of them talked about stress, physical and mental health problems when they were in public places. Abba from Cuba said that because of Islamophobia, they have become vulnerable and it is very hard for them to go out. She said, and I quote, if as a Muslim woman, I am quiet and do not respond to the negative comments. I seem to be reinforcing the concept of an oppressed woman. But if they see my confidence and if I speak in defense of myself, I become a threat." Unquote. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned. We'll meet next week. Until then, goodbye and Allah Hafiz.